stream. I'm very excited to have Susan Rock here. Um, first of all, I'm just going to give a little intro to myself um, and then what we're here to talk about today. So um, quick intro to me is I am a career coach, wellbeing specialist, author, um, and corporate trainer. Normally, I don't get stuck with all of the titles, but today I'm going to do that. And in fact, I'm going to encourage students to do the same. I was actually on another call um, before this, uh, and there was a woman who encouraged me to say, actually, as women, we need to embrace all of our titles. So um, before I introduce Susan, I will just remind her to do exactly as, I've, as I have done. Um, and then we'll get on with talking um, about what we're going to talk about. And, and that is, um, Susan has been a fantastic student on my program. Um, and that was a program to help um, senior professional women to transition to become a coach or a consultant. Uh, it was an eight week program. And Susan was one of the most um, ardent students, very curious, inquisitive, and always very much uh, engaging in everything um, that was shared, supporting and helping others as well, uh, and very much lively and committed. So Susan, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Rita. Um, yep, I'm good. I'm wearing my favorite color, which is green. Um, and I'm wearing a bit of my Jamaica uh, bag, which is part of my identity. Yes, I'm good. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, so let me first of all um, ask you to share, you know, what is one thing um, or one program or offer or something that you're really excited to share and that you want everyone to know about? Okay, can I just say that there may be some friends that want to join, so keep an eye out for them. Um, so my biggest uh, exciting project at the moment is the Identity Awareness Intervention Programme. This uh, came out of the research that I did back in 2017, but it's going back quite a while, looking at identity in children and young people. And as a result of, of that, I developed a, a programme and we have formulated it into an intervention program. We are looking for funding and to pilot it. Uh, we believe very strongly that this program delivered by us can impact on children and young people's lives. I believe it can save literal lives, um, having worked with young offenders for over 20 years. And I also uh, believe it will save local authorities, governments, um, corporate, bodies finance because um, for example it costs 140,000 pounds a year to keep a young offender inside somewhere like Felton Young Offenders in fact it may have gone up now so um, I believe this program will not only save lives physical lives but it will also help to save money which will ultimately benefit the community Mm, yes, this um, program sounds like it is very um, wide ranging for both young people involved, but also society uh, as a whole. Um, yeah. So before we move on, I would invite you, Susan, um, to tell us what titles do you have? What titles? Yes. Oh, OK. Oh, right. Well, I have a master's. I did. I did a master's in social anthropology, looking at childhood, youth and education. And I also have a BA Honours degree in Community Justice. That was uh, back in 2000. Um, I had to do this degree. It was a part of the training to be a probation officer. I also have some legal exec qualifications. I have some experience. I've been working in the legal field, civil and, um, civil and criminal for, I would say, 30 odd years. Hello, Lee. Fantastic. That's great. It really shows um, the breadth of your professional experience, not only your lived working experience, but also um, the qualifications that you have studied um, and that are hard. Um, so that's brilliant. Thank you so much um, for sharing that with us. So um, I'd like to move on to talk a little bit more about your experience um, on the programme. Um, and, you know, to start with, first of all, you know, how did you um, decide that this was something you wanted to do? And then, you know, why did you think that it'd be good to go on a program that would help you to transition from employment to self-employment in the first place. We'll talk about the program itself. Okay, so I love learning, first of all. So when there's an opportunity to learn, I will say yes, right? Um, 
I met you, Akua, through the Fab and Fearless uh, program that um, Yinka, Yinka ran, and we connected. And um, when I came to learn that you were piloting your program and you wanted to have this creator cohort, and it was going to be free uh, uh, for this time, I thought, yes, you know, I needed something like this because um, I'm at a very, very early stage of business. Um, the whole, the whole journey of the whole world of business is completely new to me. I've been employed all my working life, and to enter, to transition from employee to uh, director, or, or you know, was a massive leap for me. In fact, it's been something that I've kind of feared to be honest um because people had mentioned to me years ago Susan why don't you go fight freelance why don't you do this and, and I just liked the security of the job annual leave sick pay you know when you're mother with children so um the I was very attracted to what you were offering because I needed somebody to help me transition as it were to this new world of work. Brilliant. Um, yes, that really helps to set the scene for everyone to understand, you know, what that transition um, is, is like, thinking about it, um, and what, you know, um, having other people like know and believe in you, but you're not being ready to um, take that leap or not yeah. being able to do that because you didn't have the, you know, the, the knowledge, the information, the support, the community to help you to make that transition. Um, it's super important that you have um, shared why you found um, coming on the program beneficial. So that's really helpful to let everyone um, know the kind of like the foresight and your reasons for joining us. But now I just want to talk a bit about, about your experience on the program um, and what your experience was in terms of, you know, um, when you think about making that transition from being um, employed to uh, self-employed, you know, what was like one or two of the biggest things that you learned from the program that really made you think, huh, wow, I really need to like, um, you know, be mindful of that. or we really, need really need to um, build that muscle to help me with my future business. So much, so much. It's quite difficult to pinpoint, you know, one thing or two things as I, the biggest thing was that it's transformation, you know, that it's, it's going to be change. I've got to think, I've got to change my mindset about money, which is a big thing for me. Um, Cause I don't actually like asking for money, but you do need money. I've got to change my mindset about discipline, you know, so you have to be, you have to be motivated. There's not a boss that you're accountable to as such that's watching over you. So I need to make sure I've got my routine, my habits, um, you spoke about self-care, that that's just as important because otherwise you can burn out and you've got to make sure that you are taking the rest, respite, looking after yourself. You looked at, um, you know, the legal aspects, you know, um, you, I, I think you just covered just about everything. And, and there's so many things that I hadn't thought about. Um, yeah just just the whole the whole thing about trans about transitioning um from being in a sense dependent on an employer to becoming independent and um yeah so that was that you covered all those areas in, in a lot of detail and you also gave access to loads of resources to um because you obviously read a lot you read a lot um and so yeah I've just um I can't I, I can't really recommend it more highly than I than I have I would definitely recommend the program to people and I know so many friends in fact Lee's one of them um and I have so many women friends around my age who've who are basically experts in their field but we don't really say we're experts we just do the grind but after all these years we have become experts we have become specialists and they're fed up of the, the, the being on the front line you know and and 
and rightly so, and they ought to be rewarded for their skills, their expertise, and, um, and not, not working so hard, to be honest. Um, I mean, um, it's not that I think that this is going to be less work, but I think it's a different type of work. But then you, people like you and Angela, you know about that. But this is, this is a new thing for me. Mm. And, and I agree with what you said. I think that that choice and that agency and that freedom to build a business and a life that you'd like is very different from being employed. So whilst you still have to work being self-employed, obviously, um, but what you are building um, and the money that you're creating is for you, for your family, for your friends, whoever you choose to spend that money on. You know, you're not yeah. tied um, by, um, you know, somebody um, deciding that one day that you're not um, the right fit of the company or them thinking that actually what you do is expendable so you are in control you're your own boss um, and you have that um ultimate um c control to you know work as much as you want work as little as you want but also to set your own fees and for you to charge as much as you like um and really for you to build the empire um that you want to and again it's not easy it, as susan said you know you do have to build that muscle around money mindset um, and really like doing your due diligence in the market, but also um, for yourself so that you know that you're charging an appropriate rate and knowing that your rates will change every time. It's not like we start with, with something that stays fixed for the entire duration of the, the, the time that we're working our business. It is something that is um, something that we continually monitor is something that we, um, you know, uh, tweak um, as necessary. So another question that I would like to ask you just in relation to the program is about, you know, um, how did you find like it, being a group program and what do you think were the benefits of that in terms of having other people to talk about um, the things that you were um, learning and things that you were you're doing um, and the things that you were trying to progress um, you know how did you feel that that was um, helpful in your learning well I believe in the power of the group and I, I mean I've known that from from my work as a probation officer I am a, a qualified group work specialist and there is enough research to evidence the benefits of being in a group environment. Groups help to challenge one another. They, you learn from each other, um, support each other. You make friends. You know, I knew you through the through a group program. So, um, so there were others. I, um, you know, I won't name them because you know I haven't got permission to name them. But it was. And what's interesting is our businesses or social enterprises, are, there's nothing similar. We're all doing different things. One's, one's doing um, music and dance with babies. <laughs> um, one's into IT. Mine is working with offenders or with young ch with children that are prone to antisocial behaviour. However, regardless of the field of specialism, you can still learn lessons and support one another so yeah I'm definitely a group work person definitely mm, mm. and it's about networking and and then this one sees something and they say oh have you seen this and and we and you share information and and you and, and, and your friendship group expands as well you know so yeah there's definitely power in groups no, I agree. But why don't you share with us your analogy about um, how it's like um, when you work out at the gym and how why it's better when you work out at a class as opposed to by yourself? Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. So I'm not very good at solo training. I once had a pass. I bought a gym pass for four, four classes. And within the, the year, I didn't use them because it was on my own, on the treadmill. I would give up. I just need somebody to push me. Now, if I'm in a group and there's a trainer and there's other women or men and we're all doing it together, it's the power of the group. Everybody's different. Like some people, because I actually, so just today, um, some people like to work on their own. They are solitary people and that's fine. But I know what I need. I need to work with others. I'm, yeah, I'm a sociable person. Um, and yes, so it works for me. The, the creator cohort group of the senior professional transitioning to a consultant stroke coach worked for me. Oh, amazing. Ah, um, so 
I want to ask you just to repeat to everyone because you know that they may have forgotten because uh, we talked about we talked about this in the beginning. But I want you to repeat the name of your program, um, where they can find out more, and where's the best place that they can contact you. So first of all, can I just mention Rock Insights, which is the name of the business. Rock Insights is a is a social enterprise. The, 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 the name came from my name, which is Susan Rock, R-O-C-K-E. Insights is the insight. You could call it the problem solving skills that we have developed over the years. So Rock Insights, and we've got a lovely logo that was designed by somebody called Emma White, um, who is based in Dubai. And she actually designed the logo for us without charging us. So shout out to Emma White. Um, the business is about delivering bespoke training, intervention training for children and young people. It can be tailored for generically, but in my mind, when it was first created, I was thinking of children that are sort of going off track, tending to get themselves into trouble, antisocial behavior, possibly a little bit difficult in the classroom um, and young offenders. I personally believe that earlier from my experience as, a, as a, somebody working with children for all these years, I personally believe the earlier you get in, the better. So it's a preventative, it's a preventative program. And we are gonna be looking at areas of identity. Who am I? That's what children basically want to know. That's what everybody wants to know. We will be looking at race and culture, ethnicity, language, why do we eat the food we eat? Why is there a tendency for most, I don't want to generalize, but a lot of us do eat rice and peas and chicken on a Sunday. Where did that come from? Why do many uh, people from West Africa, Nigeria, why did they eat jollof rice? What was that about? Where did it originate from? And it's across the board. My, my main focus initially, or our main, that will be African, African Caribbean children, because that's the passion, right? I am a black woman. However, it can be used generically. It, you know, there are working class white boys that are just as disadvantaged as some of us. And why do they, for example, eat Yorkshire pudding on a Sunday? Where did that come from? So we will explore things like food, we will be exploring music. Why do? Where did the rhythm, what's the rhythm about? Is it about going back to um, the, when we were um, the, the tribal, the tribal um, beginnings? Is it how far does it go? Does it, how far does it go? So we will be looking at things like if you're into, if, if, if the choice is reggae, if it's ska, if it's, um, Soka, if it's Calypso, whatever. Then we were looking at um, dance. We will also be looking at art, African art. What, you know, so that whole idea and clothes, we'll also be exploring religion and beliefs. And the whole thinking behind this is that when a child or when a young person knows their background, their history, have you heard the phrase? You can't know where you're going until you know where you're coming from. So the thinking is once we get children to research with them, with their parents or carers going back, and if they have grandparents alive, they will form part of the program as well. And it's going to be an organic thing. We will do it together. We're thinking of about six to seven people, children in a group at a time for 12 weeks. And uh, it's going to be a great fun way of exploring origins, okay? My, my master's was in anthropology, which is about going back to basics. And so we're taking everyone back to their basics, taking the children, why do you do this? Why do you like the rhythm? Why does, why does the bass really do something to you? Yeah, my favorite instruments are bass and drums. It's got to have something to do with my ancestry, yeah? My heritage. So it's about, tracing, doing the research, discovering, doing it with your family members, and then helping them 
to start planning to be the people, the young people that they can be, the positive young people that they can be to make a positive change in our community. That is fantastic. Um, Thank you. I just wanted to say, um, perhaps it is not um, generic, perhaps it's more um, uh, identifying with particular um, segments and groups of young people um, who may come from different backgrounds. It may be the Caribbean, it may be the, the young um, Caucasian um, disadvantaged male or whatever background it is, but your program is very specific about um, targeting a specific type of young person that needs to, to go through this um, education uh, and also that support to help them to be able to thrive and to help them to really um, embrace you know where they come, came from um, and how they can be um, you know really um, you know, integrated um, into who and what they are. Would you agree? Yes, I, my, my passion is young people and my heart is for black and minority ethics. That's the truth. Having worked within the youth and the criminal justice system for almost 30 years, I've seen too many children that look like my children in terms of color and look like me inside the secure institutions. They have talent. I've seen their artwork on the wall. They produce music. They've just got misdirected and they don't know who they are. That's what I would say. And so they are looking to sometimes to negative peers, negative elders who are telling them, we will tell you who you are. If you come to us, we'll give you money. So they find themselves drawn into crime, antisocial behavior. They just need some education into their, their origins and their potential, their history. So that's what we're about. We're gonna take children, young people on a journey to discover who they are and who they can be and where they're coming from. Fantastic. And it's, and it's gonna save lives. I really do believe, I'm not exaggerating that if a child or a young person fully engages with this program and they have the support of their carers or their, you know, their, their parents or grandparents, there is the potential to make a significant change to potentially save young people's lives. There are too many of our children dying, often at the hands of their own, you know, it's, it's just, it just has to stop. And there's too many mothers, fathers, siblings, relatives crying over the loss of young people. And if we can save one life, it will be worth it. So where can they find us? Um, under, uh, I'm currently on LinkedIn and I, there's several posts with me talking about the, the Identity Awareness Program. Um, so you look for Susan Rock, that's Susan, S-U-S-A-N, Rock, R-O-C-K-E. Um, you can email me at rock, R-O-C-K-E, insights, I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S, at gmail.com. I'm looking for funding. Uh, once we get funding, there will be a website uh, and we will go into the other social media, like the Twitter spaces and the other spaces. Um, so we have, we have a lot of ambition. We have a lot of work to do, but we are focused and we're ready and we're raring to go. Amazing. Well, we can all see that you're very passionate about this um, area and I have no doubt that you will be very impactful um, and it's only a matter of time um, before um, the right um, local authority or corporate um, helps to, um, you know, let you, not let you, to, for you to get, work in partnership, for you to do your, your pilot, um, but not only that, for there to be um, results um, life-changing results as you said you know it's so um, powerful when young people are in the right environment and um, supported yeah. by a number of different people not only um, the, the parents but if you're outside of their direct family network um, but including the parents and relatives and community because you know everyone is not in isolation we all part of families and communities but with us all working together we can definitely um, impact uh, and change lives so um, can I just can I just say who might be interested? So the um, youth offending teams could benefit primary schools, 
um, PRUS, Pupil Referral Unit, police commissioners, local police. Uh, you know, we all want to make our communities safer, safer and, health and healthier. And the other thing I forgot to mention is about the well-being of children. Um, when a child feels secure, feels affirm, feels um, safe, that's a healthier child. And there's evidence of the decline in mental um, wellness of children, particularly even since the, you know, the COVID, it's, there's, a, there's a pandemic out there. So even if the child isn't necessarily committing crimes, but if they are suffering with their mental health, they need to be feel better about themselves. The identity awareness intervention program can help. Mm, mm, absolutely, fantastic. Um, okay, I think that we will leave it there. I think that season eight has been a fantastic um, conversation. You have really yeah. um, shared with us um, what you're bringing into um, the world. We're very excited to see that. Um, and we definitely want to hear, um, you know, when, um, you know, there's further news and to celebrate your success with you. Um, we're grateful for you um, sharing your um, experience of the program uh, and what you learned. Um, and we are always um, joyful for you to stay um, in our community and our network, as I'm sure that you will. Um, just yeah. to, from me, just to say, um, we'll be having others. Um, there's going to be other two, hopefully, of these, uh, which will be coming um, very shortly. Watch this space. Um, and watch this space if you're interested um, in the next cohort, um, get in touch with you on LinkedIn. Um, we can talk further about that if that's of interest. Um, all right. Can I just, can I also thank you, Akua, because you have been amazing. I don't know if I've picked you up enough, but you know, you're, you're so passionate, obviously, about what you do. You work tremendously hard. I can tell that by the content of the sessions. You read widely because you were able to reference all sorts of books that you've read and I know you've invested a lot of energy and time into to, to, to providing this resource for people like myself and I really genuinely appreciate that and thank you for inviting me to be on the creator cohort definitely I mean that we will be friends for life Ikua I thought that was well. Okay, so the final thing for me to say is obviously congrats, Susan. You are now officially graduate. Woo